Self-respecting adults don't believe in fairy tales, says Sergei Lavrov, as he calls the UK handling of the Skripal case an open mockery of international law. Then, in response, the UK ambassador to the UN, Russia's request to play a part in the Salisbury nerve agent probe is like an arsonist investigating its own fire. She said just ahead of today's meeting that allowing Russian scientists into an investigation when they are the most likely perpetrators of the crime in Salisbury would be like Scotland Yard inviting in Professor Moriarty. So I don't think that's a tenable way forward. The Russian ambassador to the UN addressed the UK's accusations against his country. Couldn't you come up with a better fake news story? We have told our British colleagues that you're playing with fire and you'll be sorry. He pointed to the television program Midsummer Murders and read from Alice's Adventures in Wonderland to mock suggestions of Russian involvement. He also claimed the UK's main argument about the unquestionable Russian origin of the Novichok is no longer valid. Following comments from the Porton Down Laboratory, where UK Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson said the Novichok agent came from Russia, the uh, Russian uh, ambassador of the year then accused the West at large of using the method of Nazi propagandist Joseph Goebbels' lies that are repeated a thousand times become the truth by trying to manipulate people via the media. A US representative to the UN, Kelly Curry, said tersely, this is not a tactic that is appropriate for this body. I got in uh, a sort of Twitter exchange with China Hand, who I follow. It's a very interesting uh, Twitter handle. And um, he's highly skeptical that this was a Russian um, uh, inspired uh, poisoning. And I s asked, You don't think that to lie about it, because obviously the UK has fallen in this regard, Iraq war refers. I said, you, don't, you do not think to lie about it would be unconscionable post Tony Blair's Iraq fiasco, um, a la the boy who cried wolf. And eventually, no one believes you about anything in these matters. And I also said, if you look, the Kremlin, in my view, has now positioned so many assets on their payroll, um, you know, abroad, and if you look at the donations Russians seem to be given very good value for money, by the way. I mean, they look, they spent money through the NRA on Trump's campaign. They're financing a lot of um, anti-European parties in Europe. Boris Johnson himself is being financed, it seems. Um, so I'm saying what he's done over the last 10 years is place you know, significant assets uh, across the chessboard. Um, and I'm saying you know, having positioned all these assets. Now, he's spoken about these sort of renegade spies before in a very fruity language. This is Putin. Um, he used the same language for the terrorists in Chechnya. Um, and then even worse, I suppose, than what he feels about the terrorists is what he feels about intelligence assets that then are turn, turncoat. Um, so I think you know his opinion around an individual who sold out more than 400 positioned intelligence assets is going to be an opinion not higher than vermin, um, uh, in my view. Um, in 1999, at the beginning of the Chechen military campaign, Mr. Putin promised to flush the terror terrorists down the toilet. What well, the election, in fact, that kind of language. On that note, this is Grozny, Chechnya, August 1995. Chechens celebrating peace. The photograph is by Thomas de Borzak. And then a photograph of executions, prospect, Pobedy in Grozny, November 1995. Chechen Republic, Russia, Stanley Green, for Lua. Powerful photographs. Putin, traitors will kick the bucket. Trust me, these people betrayed their friends, their brothers in arms. This is what I mean about, you know, if it's a 
continuum. These are the worst of the worst. Um, which all leads me to believe that in this particular regard, although it's a, it's a typically Sorkov type situation of destabilized perception, which is evidenced by this, both guinea pigs were found dead while the cat needed to be put down, Salisbury attack. Then uh, Bloomberg View is talking of uh, beware of a cyber war with Russia. Putin has proven he will retaliate, trying to get this calibration right of something that is just disruptive enough that it throws off the Russian game, but not so severe that they feel they need to come back heavier, is what needs to happen. The problem is that Putin has won the contest of what military planners call escalation dominance for now. He proved he was willing to go further in 2016 than the established cyber context, contest between the US and Russia. In some ways, Russia already showed it was willing to go beyond previously established understandings of cyber warfare when in 2014 hackers made public a recording of a phone call of former US Assistant Secretary of State Victoria Newland, who was actually far more powerful than the title might suggest talking with the U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, Jeffrey Piet. None of this is an excuse for inaction. Russia's troll farms and hackers should be probed and disrupted. State voting systems should be hardened before the midterm elections. When cyber warfare is complicated, there are honest reasons the Trump administration would want to proceed carefully so as not to escalate a cyber war with Russia. 5th of December 2016, I was writing about this and I used the quotation, we have a deviate tomahawk, and I concluded by saying that Putin has proven himself an information master and his adversaries are his information victims, which seems to me to be the point that Bloomberg View is also making.